Hello and welcome to a new episode of HiQ Tech Talks. Earlier this week, Apple launched their iPhone 12 series. These new phones come in two different families. You have the regular versions, the iPhone 12 and the iPhone 12 mini, which share the exact same specifications except for the screen size. And you also have the Pro versions, the iPhone 12 Pro and the iPhone 12 Pro Max. If you're going to upgrade this year, which one should you pick? Should you pick the regular version or the Pro version? Previous years, it has been easier to pick between the Pro and the regular. The Pro versions, for example, have always had much better screens. But this year, they have almost the same screen. The Pro screen is slightly more bright, but overall, it's really good screens. There are really good screens on both phones. There are also some small other details, such as you have stainless steel on the Pro model versus aluminum on the regular. Uh, you can record in Dolby Vision at 60 FPS instead of 30 FPS on the regular version. And of course, you have this third camera on the Pro Series, the wide angle camera. But there is also new hardware on the iPhone 12 Pro Series this year, which have not been there before, and it's something called a LiDAR. In Apple's presentation, LiDAR is introduced as a way to enable object and room scanning, photo and video effects, and precise placement of AR objects. So yeah, if you're a heavy AR user, you will save lots of time since you don't have to wait for seconds to start the AR app to start tracking the room. But what does it mean with object and room scanning? In Apple's presentation, you can actually see sketches where they have used the LiDAR to scan a room and they end up with a complete CAD model of that room, which actually looked, looked kind of great. How good does that work in practice? At HiQ, we have this room we call the Showcase Room, where we showcase some of the products we have delivered for our clients. The room is fairly complex to scan. It has a sofa in the middle and lots of details in the, on the walls. So it will be a good challenge for the LiDAR scanner to scan. In the corner of the room, we also have this VR station. So when a person puts on the headset, they're actually being transported into a virtual version of this room, which looks exactly the same as the regular room, but it's rendered in 3D. To create this room, we actually measured by hand the entire room and the different things in the room. And we then created this 3D world based on the measurements. So if a user wants to pick uh, a showcase, they can just pick up a statue in front of them to start the diff uh, some simulation. So, so we wanted to see how much time could we save by using the iPad with the LiDAR scanner to scan the room, instead of having to go by hand and measure every detail of the room by hand. So to do that, we went to the Haiku office and met up with Peter Eriksson, who is one of our 3D artists, who was the one who created the 3D room for our showcase room. We are on the way to the Haiku office, where we will meet up with Peter Eriksson, one of our 3D artists. And uh, he will use the LiDAR scanner to scan two different rooms, and they will then see how easy it is to get started with this. Hello Peter. Hello. So, um, what are we going to do today? Today we're going to scan, uh, LiDAR scan this room. Yeah. This is our showroom. Yeah. Can you tell me a little bit more about the showroom? Yeah, it's uh, the place where we take uh, clients, new mm -hmm. visitors to the office, show them what we have done. Cool. And you yeah. also have this kind of VR setup over there. What, uh, yeah. what do we do with that? That's uh, when you take the VR glasses on, you are in the same room mm -hmm. as you were. Cool. But in uh, virtual reality. Wow. And you modeled then this virtual room based on this room. Yeah. But uh, you had to walk around and measure it yourself, right? Yeah. With a uh, measurement tape or so, right? Yes. And uh, model it for hand. Yeah, okay. So, so hopefully it's, uh, it's an easier process to scan it with a LiDAR yeah. uh, than measuring it by hand. Yes. Cool. We certainly hope so. The app we used for scanning is called Canvas. And what Canvas does is, when you move around the iPad around the room, it captures a point cloud of that room. And once you have captured a point cloud of the entire room, you have to send up this point cloud to the Canvas servers. And they will then manually go in and create a CAD model based on your point cloud. This entire process costs money, and it also takes two to three days before you receive back the CAD model that you have captured. In our case, it took two days. 
You can set up as many rooms as you want to to Canvas. We captured two rooms and set up two rooms and then went to, waited for results to come back. Once we got the models back from Canvas, we could open them in our 3D model program and investigate them. And just doing an A-B comparison with the measurement we did before by hand and the new models, it's actually fairly spot on in dimensions. Just a small differences in by a few centimeters, but it's overall on this kind of room scale, the results were actually quite impressive. Okay, Peter, so once we sent the file up to Canvas and received back the optimized CAD version, uh, how simple was it to use it after we received it? Uh, it was uh, very simple. Mm. It was uh, like two formats, one Collada file uh, and one OBG with the original scan mm. uh, with all the textures applied. Okay, and that are standard formats that yeah. Yeah. everyone can use. Yes. Uh, the only problem was that uh, for me was that the uh, Y orientation was flipped. Okay, and well, that was a simple, simple fix, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so w could we have used that instead of measuring it and modeling it ourselves for the showroom, for example? Yeah, for a quick, uh, quick and dirty job, yeah. that would be enough. But even for the big uh, work for showroom, would it help anything to have it being done automated like this, or was it? In, in the scope of everything was, was actually measuring the small part. Yeah. The small part. Yeah. Yeah, so it's, it, it's, it's a nice feature, but maybe not that nice anyway, since it's so much extra work to do all the rest, right? Yeah. Based on this small test, I don't think you should pick an iPhone 12 Pro based on the functionality to be able to scan a room using the LiDAR and turn it into a CAD model. It, it doesn't take that much time to scan a room yourself using measurements and the automatic scanning by scanning a point cloud and having to pay and send it up uh, and there are also lots of errors in the wall structure in the generative model makes this for an experience which is not that great today. There are lots of improvements to ARKit that actually now makes it possible to detect flat surfaces and so on when scanning with, uh, with the point clouds. Maybe it will be improved in the future, but today, with the current software and the current capabilities, it does not work that great for scanning rooms into CAD models. So, should you pick the iPhone 12 Pro series just because they have a LiDAR sensor? I guess if you want to capture rooms as CAD models, the answer is probably no, because the work process and the precision uh, on the details of the walls and so on is fairly low. But I guess if you take lots of photos and you live in the Nordic countries where six months of the year we have it fairly dark up here, then I think the LiDAR will really help out with the photography. I think it will help you take more pictures in darker evenings and darker environments where you have not been able to take great pictures before. Uh, and it's also, since it's also enabled for video, I think both for photos and videos, when it's getting darker and darker outside, I think that is where LiDAR will shine the most. And so far, we don't have any phones with LiDAR, and this functionality is not enabled for the iPads. But my guess is that this will be a huge improvement in how we take photos and videos on our iPhones for the next couple of months, especially here in the Nordic countries. That's all for this session. In the next session, we will talk a bit about 5G in the new iPhones and how it will affect us as clients.